Welcome to MedCrime. Today we shall be looking at the commonly used in emergency drugs, their classification, indications, and their doses. Emergency medications may be divided into two categories. The first category is the drugs which are essential and should be part of every emergency drug kit in an institution. And the second category consists of the drugs which are useful but are optional depending on the practitioner's training in emergency medical procedures and whether sedation and general anesthesia are needed for the behavior and anxiety management. These emergency drugs are stocked in an emergency crash cut and used in resuscitation or specialist procedures. Number one drug is adrenaline or epinephrine. Adrenaline is a sympathomimetic drug which is an alpha and beta adrenergic agonist. It is used in resuscitation in cases of cardiac arrest, anaphylaxis, superficial bleeding, and asthma which has been in responsive to albuterol and salbutamol. Then we have atropine. Atropine belongs to a class of drugs known as anticholinergics, and they help to dry up body secretions and body fluids and also slow the gut movement. Atropine is the first line drug in the treatment of acute severe bradycardia or less low heart rate in absence of a reversible cause. Atropine is also used in organophosphate or carbamate poisoning or toxicity, and additionally, it acts as an antispasmodic agent. Norepinephrine, or noradrenaline, is a sympathomimetic drug. This drug is used in the control of blood pressure during various cases of hypotension and can also be used as an urgent treatment during cardiac arrest. Calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate is classified as a calcium salt, which is an antidote, and used for ventricular arrhythmias and reduces the risk of ventricular fibrillation. This is a cardiac arrhythmias. It is also used in hypokalemia, or low potassium levels in blood, tetany, hypocalcemia, and magnesium toxicity. Sodium bicarbonate is a systemic alkalinizing agent, and it's used in the treatment of acute hyperkalemia, severe metabolic and respiratory acidosis, and also in cases of tricyclic antidepressant overdose. Then we have amiodarone. Amiodarone is a class 3 antiarrhythmic drug that is indicated in the treatment of cardiac arrhythmias, for example, recurrent hemodynamically unstable ventricular tachycardias mm. and recurrent ventricular fibrillations, have atrial fibrillations, wide complex tachycardias, and PSVT. Then we have 50% dextrose, which is indicated in the treatment of hypoglycemia or hyperinsulinemia or to restore normal blood glucose levels in case of, hypo of hypoglycemia. This dextrose can also be used in management of hyperkalemia, and in DKA, or diabetic acidosis, it is used to prevent hypoglycemia when you're treating uh, with insulin. Then we have nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is a vasodilatory drug, which primarily works by relieving angina chest pain, it is a type of a nitrate which can also be used to decrease hypertension. We have succamethonium or succinyl choline. This is a depolarizing muscle relaxant that is used in cases of rapid sequence induction for procedures which require only brief duration of muscle relaxation, for example, emergency intubation and airway management. Then we have dopamine with a catecholamine neurotransmitter. We use this drug to treat hemodynamic imbalances, poor perfusions of vital organs, low cardiac output, and hypotension. It can also be used to treat cardiac arrest and bradycardia. Then we have dobutamine. This drug is used in the treatment of heart failure, cardiogenic shock, congestive heart failure uh, to increase cardiac output. Then we have furosemide or Lasix. This is a lobe diuretic or high selling Lobe that is used to treat hypertension and edema in congestive heart failure, renal disease, and hypertension. And it can also be used in case of fluid overload to do rest and also in case of hyperkalemia. We have lidocaine or lignocaine. This is a local anesthetic agent of the amide group and is also a class 1b antiarrhythmic agent that is primarily used in treatment of ventricular arrhythmias, in acute myocardial infarction. The jobs in poisoning, cardioversion, and in some procedures, for example, cardiac catheterization. Then we have adenosine. 
These are medication used in myocardial perfusion scintigraphy and treatment of supraventricular tachycardias to revert these supraventricular tachycardias. Hydrocortisone is a corticosteroid that we use in anti-inflammatory cases and for treating dermatosis, endocrine disorders, and immune conditions. So in addition to all this, it's used in uh, autoimmune reaction, asthmatic reaction, and aphylaxis. The usual dose is around 50 to 100 mg intravenously, given for 6 hours. And then vasopressin is a, a drug that is indicated to increase blood pressure in adults in vasodilatory shock that is refractory to application of fluids and catecholamines. This vasopressin is used as a last resort. Midazolam is a short-acting hypnotic or sedative drug which has anxiolytic properties, muscle relaxant properties, anticonvulsant, sedative, and amnesic properties. We use midazolam in sedation and also in prolonged seizures. Then naloxone is an opioid antagonist that is used to block or reverse the effects of opioid drugs, for example, pethidine, morphine. It is the main antidote for opioids and is available as an injectable and auto-injector. And more recently, there is a, a development of intranasal doses forms. And then we have diazepam. Diazepam is a long-acting benzodiazepine, which has rapid onset. And we use it commonly to treat panic disorders, anxiety, alcohol withdrawals, and seizures. We also have method prednisolone. This is a corticosteroid we use for inflammation or immune reactions across a variety of organs and endocrine conditions. Then we have heparin. Heparin is an anticoagulant medication that is used to prevent and treat thrombotic events, for example, venous thromboembolism, pulmonary embolism, and moreover, heparin prevents clotting during surgical procedures, for example, cardiac surgeries. Then we have aminophilin. Aminophilin is a bronchodilator that is used to treat acute asthmatic attack, emphysema, and chronic bronchitis. Uh, it is indicated for treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And then we have promethazine or phenegran. Phenegran is a, a sedative and an anxiolytic that reduces nausea and vomiting, can be also be used in anaphylaxis and uh, in case of reaction to blood products or blood transfusion. We have dexamethasone. Dexamethasone is also a corticosteroid that is used to treat uh, severe allergic disorders, skin conditions, ulcerative colitis, arthritis, lupus, and in emergency cases we use it in case of asthmatic attacks, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and in allergic reactions. Then we have derifilin. This is to treat acute asthmatic attack and chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders. We have ethamcylate or stronexamic acid. This year this is a synthetic hemostatic drug that we use in case of a capillary bleeding. It works by increasing the ability of the platelets to stick together and form a blood clot so that we can stop bleeding. Then we have flumazenil. This is a benzodiazepine antagonist that we use in reversing benzodiazepine overdose in post-operative sedation from benzodiazepine anesthetics. And then we have potassium chloride or KCL. Uh, it's used in the management of hypokalemia and is an electrolyte supplement, uh, basically. And then we have digoxin. Digoxin is uh, the most important emergency medication and is used in the management of atrial fibrillation. It is used in the management of atrial fibrillation, arrhythmias, congestive heart failures, and the normal dose ranges from 10 to 15 micrograms per kg given on intravenous route over 20 to 30 minutes. And then we have amphetamine sulfate, which is a CNS stimulant. Uh, it's used to treat attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and narcolepsy. Amphetamine is also to treat cyanide poisoning. 